Welcome to this recording where you're going to listen to insightful moments recorded during live coaching sessions with my clients who come from diverse professional backgrounds. And if you like what you hear today, please share it with your friends and colleagues. And remember to hit the subscribe button now and ensure that you never miss any other episode. Thank you. So how do you deal with nerves on the stage or on a platform or when you have to do a presentation? You ask yourself, what are those feelings I'm having, right? So what am I feeling at the moment? What is it that makes me nervous? That's something you can do before the event. You could sit with yourself a week before, a couple of days before, get a piece of paper, write it down. What is it that my body's telling me? I'm nervous because, I don't know, I could get my words wrong. Oh, they may not like me. I'm actually worried that I'm not going to get there on time. There's all sorts of reasons why people are nervous. All my PowerPoints are going to work. Or maybe there's that person in the audience that I know that gives me a lot of pressure. They're always looking at me with certain eyes. Who knows what it is that you're thinking? Or I'm not going to be good enough, right? Or I'm going to forget what I say. All of those things. Universal fears. Right? So our thoughts are based on beliefs. So a lot of times our nerves are coming up because we have beliefs. We have universal beliefs. And underneath those universal beliefs, we've got underlying beliefs that keep supporting the universal beliefs. And then they give us thoughts and thoughts create worlds. Our outcomes come from our thoughts because our thoughts create the world that we end up living in. So that's why it's important to to acknowledge those beliefs and the underlying beliefs. What is it that I'm really believing? What am I believing that is possible for me? I, I can get my words mixed up. Yeah. You know, people don't always like me. You know what? I've seen that happen. Even if it hasn't happened to you, by the way, the fact that you've seen it happen to somebody else, you can actually wear it as if it happened to you. This is why we've got to be very careful with the power of influence. We can make ourselves nervous because we know of somebody else that told us about a terrible story. You go, oh, my God, this could happen to me. You know, so just check and see what is triggering the feeling and what is it that you're really worried about. Write it down on a piece of paper. Do a little debrief. Obviously, days and maybe weeks before the presentation, the workshop, whatever it is that you're delivering that you believe is really important, but it's making you feel uncomfortable. So you face it. You write it down. You write it down and you start to assess. These are the thoughts I'm having. These are the beliefs I'm having. And you face them. And they're quite painful as you face them. However, what you're doing, you're raising awareness so then you can actually make choices in changing the way you feel, the way, what you believe, and you can create new beliefs. And one of the quick ways for me is, is to go, okay, I believe I'm not good enough, or maybe I believe that I'm going to get something wrong, or I'm not going to get there on time. I then develop strategies for those, so then I can just get on with it and not be suffocated by those beliefs. So I can really get on focusing on the purpose of what I'm doing. Sometimes those beliefs come up and they're also flagging things that may need attention. Like I need to learn my content a little bit better. I need to prepare. I need to make sure I've got the, I know how I'm going to get there. And if, you know, if this goes wrong, I've got this plan in place and so on. Um, So you can address some of those. You can also change some of those beliefs and you can then focus on the purpose what is the purpose of what I'm saying? In other words, what is the outcome for my listener, the client, the um, audience? What is it that they're wanting? And one of the examples I use is imagine if you were a scientist and you developed this incredible medication that solves problems for somebody that can't get out of bed in the morning because they've got so much pain. Let's just make this up. And you've been it's been years and years and years in the laboratory and you finally found all the formulas and you made this amazing medicine. And you talk about the medicine all the time and how amazing it was and how long it took you to make it and all the little components. Meanwhile, the audience, all they want to know is how do they take the medicine because they just want to be relieved of the pain. This is what outcome is. Outcome often is very different to what we want to talk about. But if my mind is about the outcome, I want to really deliver the message to these people that I actually now have a solution to dealing with their pain. They're going to wake up in the morning, have no more pain. That's going to be the most important message in my delivery. So this is just a metaphor that I'm using. So when we're speaking, even for ourselves, to actually feel good about what you're doing is to go, what is the outcome? 
How am I serving in this message? What can I say in this message that is going to be a value proposition, is going to solve a problem? So all of that thinking can also get your mind off you. However, you do your homework first. Figure out what's disturbing you. What are some solutions around that? What needs to be attended to? And then move straight into purpose, purpose, outcome. The reason why you do what you do, because really you are serving and you're you're giving a value. You're providing a value. And if you get excited about that, so will your audience. And everything you say, every bit of language around that is about what are they going to get out of it. And the better you do that, the more powerful, you know, inspirational you'll be because you're getting to the solution quickly. And one of the ways quickly to do that is really put everything at the start of a sentence. At the start of the sentence is the outcome and then you back it up later instead of usually people put the outcome at the end of the sentence. They talk and talk and talk and then they go, bang, you're going to get this. I would rather immediately keep thinking, what are they going to get out of it and how do I back it up? What are they going to get out of it and how they back it up? And then we go into that why, the what, the how talk. Okay. Thank you for listening to this recording. I hope it has helped you. Please remember to subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time.